have tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord oh. Please share God's love and God's peace with one another. God's peace, there he is. <laughs> God's peace. God's peace, honey. God's peace, love him. Adam, I thought I saw you out there. God's peace. Jake, I'm still on, honey. Jake? Uh, why don't we have um, kids 
come forward for a children's sermon. Children's sermon, kids come forward. And uh, while they're coming forward, a note from our welcome committee, if you uh, have a name tag, you should be wearing them. Otherwise, the welcome committee will, will hate on you. And, uh, and uh, it makes us just a friendlier place. And also, if you want to make yourselves known and you're visiting, you could fill out one of those yellow cards to do that for too. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wow, that is really sad. Remember, you guys can scream, right? Can you get really loud? Can you get really loud? No? Let's try. Good morning. Good morning. This whole section right here. Let's try again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Is it hot? Yes. Is it hot? Yeah. Is it summertime? Yes. How many of you are done with school? Woo! Are you excited? That's a happy smile. Yeah? So it's hot out. It's summertime. What do you like to do in the summer? What do you like to do? What? Go to the pool. Go to the pool. Do some swimming. Yeah? What else do you like to do? What do you like to do? Swimming. Um, All right. Play outside. Play outside. Play do what? The, okay. So we get like, we probably like to do a lot of things that are outside, right? Because it's hot. We get swimming. We play outside. We may run, race. Maybe we'll play ball of some kind, yeah? God gave us all these beautiful outdoors, and every time it gets warm and sunny, you kind of start to see everyone go, oh, man, I love taking a walk. I've taken my dog out for a walk. She's chased after some deer, yeah, right? And I've had to scream at her. She enjoys being out in that field out there just as much as I do and taking a walk everywhere. And all of that is something God gave us, something that we can celebrate. And so when you're out swimming and, and playing ball and running and racing, God is with you in those moments. If you just look around you and look at the trees and look at the blue sky and the sun, all of that is God talking to you? Not just in here, in these walls, but outside. Now when you're outside, how do you treat the, the, the earth around you? Do you like see an ant hill and stomp on it? Is that what you No? You sure? I can't stomp on the ants. They're so tiny, right? So we can take care of everything around us, right? We, might, we shouldn't be throwing garbage on the ground, right? We can take care of what God gives us. So next time you're outside, I want you to really look around. If it's raining, dance in puddles. Tell your parents I said that you could dance in puddles. All right? Because God has given you all those things. So can we pray and thank God for that? All right. God, we thank you for our skies, our sun, for the summer, for the end of school and the time to play outside and to go swimming. Be with us as we celebrate your world and the creation you have given us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, you can head to Sunday school right down that way. And at this time, we will sell it, continue our with special music.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from, the, from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, 
let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still pleasing people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not re receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me before I begin. God, I give you thanks that you are here with us in this place, that you have gathered us together, that you brought us here. May your word be proclaimed. May it plant seeds and take root. May we go out changed and transformed. In your name I pray. Amen. So we're going to be doing a sermon series on the book of Galatians. Pastor Carl and I, for the next several weeks, are going to be working our way through Galatians. And this is probably the angriest letter of Paul. You get a hint, because if you looked at other letters in the New Testament, letters that Paul wrote, uh, you can check this out. There's always a pattern. There's a pattern to letter writing in the ancient world, and, and one of the patterns was to give thanks for the community that you are writing to. So Paul, in all of, his other's letter, all of his other letters, would have this paragraph where he give thanks, gives thanks for this community, and usually ties it into something that he wants to talk about later in the letter spiritual gifts or unity of the body of Christ? Well, we've just read the beginning of the first chapter of Galatians, and you may have noticed there's no given thanks paragraph. He doesn't go too far into that. Instead, he starts with this kernel of the gospel, of, of what he claims is the gospel that Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and, and Jesus Christ who died for our sins so that we may be set free from this present evil age. This is his kernel. And then from there he goes straight into, I am astonished. Paul is mad. He's upset. For him, this is a, a group of churches in Galatia that grew as he proclaimed the gospel. That gospel, that kernel he gives in the beginning. And now I've had other preachers come in and tell them that they got half the story. Half the story, and now here's the rest telling these Gentile Christians that they should be following the Torah. And it's not that, that following the Torah is a bad thing. For Paul, even Jewish Christians could continue following the Torah. This isn't a bad thing. It was a good thing, something that formed a people in the midst of oppression and against empires and was a covenant with God. But for Paul... Adding this little caveat, this there's the rest of the story, is distorting the truth that Paul has stated from the beginning. That these Gentile Christians don't have to do anything other than hear the word proclaimed, the revelation in Christ, that we are set free. And so he gets right to the point because he feels like there's a lot at stake here. So I've just summed up the whole book of Galatians, so we can all go home now. We don't have to continue the sermon series. 
This is to try and give us a backdrop of, of where we'll be going and where Paul is starting out from and why he feels it's so urgent that he gets straight to the point. And what stood out to me as I read this text was this phrase, a present evil age. It stood out especially as Pastor Carl finished his class on Wednesday night, and he talked about systemic evil. And in class, we were able to describe all the ways we see and experience evil in the world. The many, many genocides in our history and in our world. War. That we live in a world with extreme wealth and extreme poverty. And there's something evil. And that we ourselves get caught up in it. That we ourselves are caught and captive in this present evil age. We can be captive by our own inaction, not resisting systems of evil when they are bubbling up, doing nothing when we hear the cries of injustice or pain or suffering. Or we can, we can be captive by our own action doing the same destructive behavior over and over and over again. We all have that kind of stuff, right? I mean, there are things that if someone starts on that with me, it's like a button getting pushed and I can fly off, right? It's the same thing every time that will needle at me and I'll get upset about and then I'll regret it later. Like, why did you let that get to you again? We know the cycles we get into. We can become captive to our attitudes and thoughts, captive to attitudes and thoughts towards individuals, the people we can't seem to forgive, and the bitterness is just growing inside us, or the people we turn the other way as soon as we see them coming. To avoid than to reach out. We can become captive to our attitudes and thoughts to this group of people or that group of people, this country or that country. We can be captive to our attitudes and thoughts so that ugliness just spills out of us and we didn't even know it was there. Captive, stuck entrenched in this present evil age. And there, though, is the kernel that Paul gives in the very beginning. The good news of Christ. That Jesus sets us free. Sets us free. But like the Galatians, we probably want to add to it, right? Sets us free, but this is how we're going to do it, okay, God? Sets us free, but, but the traditions that we've held on to that have been good and helpful and good for our soul, we're going to keep going with those even if they no longer are what God calls us to do. Now, Let's be honest, y'all. I know contemporary sounds like it's not traditional, but we got our traditions, right? Right? That if we started messing with how we do things as a contemporary service, it might get us a little nervous, right? We all have our stuff. And we may add to it that we have certain expectations about how you are supposed to behave in church. And, and if someone else doesn't behave that way, well, side eye over here. Or maybe if someone's crying in church, we don't know what to do because you're not supposed to let all that out, right? Or maybe we're the one. I am usually the one trying really hard not to cry because I hate it. 
We got stuff, we add it to this Jesus sets us free. And we find ourselves still struggling, still pushing. We want to stay exactly how we are, exactly where we are. Keep the good news over here for when we need it. But we always need it. This week I was reading poetry. Pastor Carl has laughed at me before because he's not all that into poetry. But I was reading the poetry of Rumi, who is a 13th century Islamic poet who's written volumes of spiritual poetry and contemplative poetry. And I was reading a poem this week where a line just really stuck out to me. Honestly, it bowled me over. And I hadn't even realized I was going to use it in a sermon. But it was, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? Why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? The door is wide open. Each one of us, me included, have walked into this place bound up with something, stuck in some place, some prison. We may have walked in knowing exactly what it was, or we may walk needing to ask God, Lord, show me. Show me where I am stuck. Show me where the walls are. For each of us, whether we know where that place is or not, we can come in, gather together, and pray that God would show us our prisons. And that in showing us, we would see God's outstretched hand. Take hold of that hand as God leads us through a wide open door. Leave behind the obstacles that we or others have placed before us. This kernel of truth, this good news proclaimed to us. The door is wide open. Let us come, pray, take God's hand, and from this sanctuary walk in new life, in a new way that may just surprise us. Amen.
We give you thanks that you have your hands open wide to us, that through your Son the door has been open to all that binds us. May we walk from place to place, from door to door, from opening to opening. May we follow in your steps by your will. Lord, we pray for the world that is crying out, crying out for this good news, crying out from a present evil age that has us all caught up. We pray for every country and every continent, for every war zone and every, every street with gun violence, for every home where there are, is abuse and every heart that is hating. We pray that you would open minds and eyes and ears, including our own. Lord, be with all those who are grieving this day. We pray today for the comfort of those who are remembering ones who were lost in war. Pray for your comfort and peace. We lift up all those who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit. With long-term illness, with addiction and depression. We pray especially today for Kimberly Beery, Meg Reidler, Earl Lydell, Harlan Sapi, Cindy Baptiste, Ed Comrouse, Tracy Shurik, Will Aidson, Lois Beery, Christina Ickes, David Schaefer, Linda Olson, Doug Reitner, Marsha Kalos, Daryl Sickles, Alice Hokim, and all others we name in this moment. give you thanks that you have revealed your truth, your grace, and your Son, and that you have sent your Holy Spirit to fill us, to strengthen and empower us on this journey. Fill us now, Lord. Fill us in this meal. Strengthen us in this place. For we remember that in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Fill us with this meal, Lord, and help us to sing. I am redeemed. 
Let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. All are welcome to this table. We invite our communion assistants forward as we include all in this meal. Control. 
Let us pray. Holy God, fed and nourished at your table, may we be strengthened now to simply walk out of the prison that holds us, break the chains that bind us to this evil age, and delight in the kingdom of God and your love that calls us. Amen. Uh, a couple of announcements. As you're leaving, there's a couple things out there for you to look at. Uh, maybe the most important one right now is VBS. That's just a couple weeks away. And there's uh, tags on the table out there for different supplies you can buy to help uh, bring down the cost for VBS for us. So I encourage, ev encourage everyone to take a tag and uh, buy some of those supplies. That'd be wonderful. We still have uh, some need of some volunteers for VBS. Um, uh, group uh, leaders and, and uh, group leader aides and those sorts of things. So there's a sign-up sheet for that. Uh, and uh, Michelle uh, will be near that VBS sign as you're leaving, so talk to her and ask her how you can best serve. This is one of our largest outreach ministries that we do every year, so I hope it's all hands on deck for us to do this together. Uh, take a look at the other things as you're going. When you leave the parking lot, you'll notice about 12 bags of mulch out there still. Um, five bags of mulch. You can throw those bags in the back of your trunk and uh, settle up with Jim or Liz at some time in your uh, convenience in the future, and we can get them out of our parking lot. So that would be good, too. This week, come back and serve. You could uh, go to LSS Food Pantry, the largest food pantry in town. We serve it there every month. And we serve this Tuesday from 10 to uh, 1. It's over on Champion Road, uh, Children's Hospital, sort of Parsons area over there. Uh, that'd be a wonderful way to serve if you're free Tuesday afternoon, 10 to about 2. Uh, or you could go to First English. Uh, Pastor Liz is in charge of that. We serve a meal at First English on Thursday evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a ministry that most Lutheran churches in Columbus uh, take part in. They serve every Thursday there, and we serve there about once every other month. And it's this Thursday for that. So talk to Pastor Liz if you want to serve Thursday night at First English to that community at Maine and Parsons in that part of town. Uh, and then the, the last thing um, is we want to honor this uh, secular holiday that, that, that we are coming upon tomorrow. Uh, it's It's... To me, it's an important holiday to remember people's uh, sacrifices, uh, men and women uh, who have died in the midst of battle uh, for uh, us and served for us. There was a wonderful podcast on fresh air this last week that I heard while I was laying down mulch and hating every minute of it. And uh, it, it was a State Department head who was responsible for creating these missions during the uh, 2000s and sending men and women into these missions, and, and, and some died. Uh, 30 died in one mission alone that he planned. And, and he made it his point to visit every one of these grave sites all across the country of all 30 of these uh, Marines that died in this mission. And, and he wrote a book about what he saw and, and the families he visited with, and a reminder for us that, um, uh, that many who die for us, our 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, it's just a real sobering thing. I would encourage you to, to listen to it, go to Fresh Air and, and listen, to, listen to him talk. Um, and, and the one thing he said that stuck with me was there's a, um, there's a Vietnam War Memorial in Boston, and I'm going by memory here, but it says, unless you remember, uh, my sacrifice is in vain. Unless you remember my sacrifices in vain. And, and I think maybe that's what we're called to simply do on Memorial Day, is remember this gift. So why don't we stand 
And remember those people in the armed services who gave a, a gift of life. And Scott will help us with that. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. <clears throat> Next week, bring a friend.